질문이 있으신 분들은 종이에다가 써서 저희 직원에게 주시면 감사하겠습니다. 질문 있으신 분들은 손을 들어서 표시를 해주시면 저희가 질문을 모았다가 이따가 토론 시간에 사용하겠습니다. 
to our county's mission to provide excellent customer service to anyone, and I mean anyone, seeking our help. That help is even greater today than it's ever been. There are approximately 160 different languages spoken here in Los Angeles County. Over 45% of our county residents speak a language other than English. This is a rate that is three times, three times higher than a national average. Over one third of these California residents who speak English, Asian languages live right here in Los Angeles County. It is unacceptable to me and to my colleagues to, that a person who does not speak English or Spanish has to be kept waiting on the phone or in a waiting room or that one of their young children have to translate for them or they cannot interact with their doctor to understand the diagnosis or they have to receive forms in English that they cannot read. Twice a year, for the past 14 years, I have hosted uh, the Asian Pacific Islander Roundtable, a community forum that focuses specifically on challenges facing uh, our county residents of Asian descent. Matter of fact, we have one coming up next week at the Toyota Museum. I believe it's next Wednesday. Is that correct? And you're all invited. As a result, our Department of Public Social Services, Philip Brown, who you're going to hear from, has made this a primary focus, ensuring that forms and documents are made available in Asian languages, that there are translators available for those who need it, and that there is a regular ongoing dialogue between the department, our community advocates, to make sure that these efforts continue. Also, our Department of Health Services and our interim director, John Shunoff, is here as well. Uh, the Department of Health Services has been able to create new positions for translators at each of our county hospitals. I'm very pleased to say as well that Rancho Los Amigos, they've also developed a very innovative program that uh, uses specific language-based translating ideas. We are looking at funding to program a train and community members to be translators. I'm also pleased that both, as I mentioned, our Director of Public Social Services, Philip Browning, and our Interim Director of Health Services, John Shunoff, are here today with me, and they will be sharing some of their efforts that are, they are using and doing to address this issue. Customer service is the very center of what our county needs to focus on, especially in these difficult times, and especially in these times where our case loads are going up in all areas. People are facing a level of crisis in their lives that they have never seen before. First time application for all county services are at its highest level in years. But the crisis in what Los Angeles County is, in our business, we are the ultimate safety net and we need to handle and we need to do the best job possible. That includes determining how we can improve or on what we have in place, especially of those who cannot communicate in English or Spanish, who are arguably the ones who need our assistance the most. So we look forward to your input today. I look forward to the interaction with our two directors that are here today and other members of this great panel. I know it'll be a good day, and I know they'll get some great ideas. We look forward to continuing to work with all of you on innovative new ways to make sure, judges, to make sure that here in Los Angeles County that all of our services have language access. Thank you all very much and welcome. Thank you so much, Mr. Kanabe, coming here and doing welcome for our event. We really appreciate it. So now we're going to hear from our seniors who are impacted by language access issue. First, let's hear from Shin Chun Ho.
안녕하십니까. 저는 현재 심형과자이며 메디칼 수혜자인 신충호입니다. 그리고 저는 남가조 노인의 부회장으로 있으며 가주 보건 리더 모임의 회원으로 메디칼 언어 캠페인 활동에 적극 참여하고 있습니다. 저는 메디칼 영어 편지를 받으면 무슨 내용인지 몰라 걱정이 되며 실제로 메디칼에서 보낸 편지의 내용을 몰라 메디칼이 끊긴 적이 있습니다. 그때마다 통역관을 대동하여 50불을 지불하고 여러 번 공공사회복지부에 찾아가서 해결을 보았습니다. 메디칼 편지를 목으로 받을 수 있다면 메디칼이 끊어질까 하는 두려운 마음과 불이익이 없을 것이라 생각이 됩니다. 지금도 남가주 노인의 사무실에 있으면 하루에도 여러 연장자들이 방문하여 전화를 하거나 상담을 요구합니다. 그러면 다른 타 단체에 소개해 주며 또한 제가 살고 있는 노인 아파트인 한 달에 한 번씩 대학생들이 방문하여 메디칼 편지를 번역해 줍니다. 그러나 한 달에 한 번이라 마냥 기다릴 수는 없는 노릇입니다. 주변에서 이렇게 고통을 받는 것을 보면 안타깝기 한이 없습니다. 하루빨리 메디칼 편지를 모국어로 받을 수 있게 되길 바라며 오늘도 메디칼에서 이러한 장장 22장의 편지를 받았습니다. 이것도 사회단체에 가서 번역을 하여 작성을 해서 기한 내에 제출을 해야 합니다. 이렇게 어려운 점을 감안하여 하루빨리 시정되기를 부탁드리며 네, 끝으로 공공사회 복지에 묻겠습니다. 아직까지 언어 서비스가 한국어로 되지 않는 중요한 이유가 무엇입니까? 답변을 부탁드립니다. 감사합니다. 안녕하십니까. 저는 가주보건 리드 회원인 전태수입니다. 현재 다리가 아프건데 불편하나 메디칼 수혜를 받는 들수 있어 감사하게 생각합니다. 몇달 전이었습니다. 저는 메디칼 편지를 가지고 민족학교로 방문하여 메디칼 사무실로 전화를 하게 되었습니다. 약 35분을 기다려서 지금과 통화를 되었습니다만 한국어 서비스 통역을 부탁 요구하였더니 지금은 한국어 서비스를 해줄 수 없으니 10분 후에 다시 전화하라면 끊어버렸습니다. 갑자기 끊어졌기 때문에 이름도 물어보지 못했습니다. 다시 전화를 해서나 약 20분을 기다리 겨우 메디칼 직원과 연결이 되었습니다. 제일 먼저 이름과 철자를 물었더니 린다라고 이름은 알려주으나 왜 철자를 물어보느냐고 불쾌해하며 가르치주지 않았습니다. 한국의 통역 서비스를 요청하였으니 기다리라고 해서 10분을 기다렸는데도 또 전화가 끊어졌습니다. 결국 1시간 10분을 전화하다가 통화를 못하고 돌아가야만 했습니다. 저는 약 2년 전부터 가주보건 리드 회원으로서 메디칼 언어 캠페인으로서 설문지 조사 공공사회복지 부의 사무실과 LA 방문 카운트 슈프바이저 사무실의 방문 등 여러 활동을 하였습니다. 
그러다, 그러다 공공사회 복지부와 미팅에서 듣게 되었습니다. 어느 문제는 우리에게 있어 너무나 중요한 문제인데 공공사회 복지에서는 우선 순위의 해결사항이 아니라고 합니다. 모국으로 된 편지를 받을 수 있도록 우선 순위 해결사항을 대려면 어느 분에게 부탁을 해야만 정확한 답변을 들을 수 있습니까? 부탁드리겠습니다. 이사입니다. 그리고 그리고 제가 1월 14일 날 2009년도 1월 14일 날이 메디칼 편지 영어로 받았습니다. 이거는 어디까지나 증거물입니다. 여러분들도 이 편지로 잘 간직해서 이런 장소에 참여하실 때 이걸 간직하여 잘 가져오십시오. 부탁드립니다. 이사입니다. 넥스트 선아 김 월스픽 미국 생활을 이렇게 이렇게 살다 보니 25년이 약 25년 살았습니다. 시민권자고요. 보시다시피 제가 지금 두 양쪽 다리가 불편하고 힘이 들지만 그러다 그 가운데서 메디카를 주셔서 잘 활용하고 있습니다. 감사합니다. 그런데 메디칼 사무실에서 편지가 올 때마다 뭐 혈압도 올라가고 또 이제 걱정이 없습니다. 왜냐하면 은 전부 영어로 오니까 너도 우리 한국에 가면 우리 마을에 가면 은말 잘한다고 얘기를 모두 이웃에서 그래요. 그런데 여기 오니까 편지를 받으니까 뭐 그렇잖아요. 그래서 때로는 자녀들한테 도움을 받지만 자녀들한테 도움을 못 받을 때는 참 딱하시오. 먼저 불안한, 불안한 마음이 먼저 듭니다. 왜냐하면은 이걸 제때에 답변을 못하고 처리를 못하면은 불이익을 당하는 일이 없을까? 이 걱정이 먼저 앞서지요. 그래서 편지를 자녀들이 도와주지만 때로는 자녀들의 도움을 받지 못할 때는 이 편지를 가지고 여기저기 다니게 되지요. 보시다시피 제 같은 경우는 한 발자국 옮기기가 참 힘이 듭니다. 그런, 그러던 중 친구를 만나서 친구의 소개로 민족학교 가주보건 리더 모임에 참석하게 되었습니다. 거기서 2년 반 전서부터 거기서 무엇을 하는 거 하니 메디칼 모국어, 저, 모국입니까? 메디칼 어느 관, 권리 캠페인을 하는 거 하게 되었습니다. 그래서 동참해서 지금까지 동참하고 있습니다. 2년 반 전서부터 동참하여서 공공사회복지부 사무실과 또는 LA 카운티 슈퍼바이저 사무실을 방문하였으며 하였습니다. 그런데 민권법 6조에 의하면은 보장된 어느 권리를 아직 제대로 받지 못하고 있거든요. 이것에 대해서 어떻게 생각하고 계시는지요? 또 어떻게 하면은 보장된 권리인 권리는 권리인 모국어로 편지를 받을 수 있는지 가르쳐 주시면은 대단히 감사하겠습니다. 감사합니다. 
I would like to um, start panel discussion, but before that, we'll, um, each panelist will be given a chance to speak. Um, the first panelist I would like to introduce is Mr. Philip Browning, Director of Los Angeles County Department of Public Social Services. Good morning. There are an awful lot of people here. I sure am impressed that everyone has come out. I'm the director of the Department of Public Social Services, as Supervisor Kanabi indicated. And I have some staff here that I would like for them to stand up so you'll know who they are. And one of the most important things, I think, of, about this meeting is that you might be able to meet someone personally who can assist if everything else fails. Bob, you want to stand up? Bob Militage is the director of the civil rights operation for us, which handles a lot of our language translations. We've got Deborah Walker, who is an expert in Medi-Cal itself. We've got Michelle. Michelle, can you stand up? Okay. We have some individuals here who I think can answer questions I might not be able to. But I'd like to start off by saying that I'm sorry we haven't done as much as we could have to put letters and forms in your language. I frankly did not realize what a problem it was, and I can tell from the uh, individuals who spoke how difficult it must be for you. In Los Angeles County, we have 2.2 million people that we serve every day. We have about 15,000 individuals who have indicated that Korean is their first language. We only have about 38 individuals who are Korean-speaking staff in DPSS. So we have a challenge to meet your needs. We're going to need some of your help. We have an automated system which sends out notices and letters, and it's been programmed for two languages, English and Spanish. That's a problem, and we recognize that. We've been working for some months to have all of the languages translated in in all the forms and have an automated process which will distribute forms and letters in your language. That automated process will not be available until later this year. Yes, sir. <laughs> we have a manual process where workers, when they look at the computer, and your name comes up, they can print off a form in your language and write your name and the appropriate information, the date, on it. What I have found out this week is that we need to improve our workers' participation in that process. We're going, we have identified a manner in which we can improve for Medi-Cal and food stamps and CalWORKs the language translation forms that you receive. I did not know that we were not doing as good a job as we should have been doing until this week. And I believe that we can correct that in a very short period of time. One of the things I would like for you to do before you leave is to, some of you, I don't have enough business cards for all of you, but for some of you to take a business card of mine, and if this problem isn't resolved very quickly, I want you to give me a call personally so I can know firsthand what's going on. I do understand how important it is for letters to come and notices to come in your language. We have tried to hire more Korean-speaking staff and have been unable to do so. I have agreed to pay for our staff 
to learn the Korean language. They say that is very, very hard. You have a language that is very difficult, and I'm sure that I could not learn it. And I do really appreciate those of you who are trying to learn English. Uh, trying to learn English. I know that is hard also. We're trying to do everything we can, and we need your assistance. There could be some things that, that you know about that would help that I don't know about. So I hope this is an opportunity for me to learn more about what we can do to improve the notices and forms that come from DPSS. Remember, we don't handle the Social Security Administration letters or notices. We do not handle SSI. But I have seen this form here, which very clearly is DPSS. And so I certainly do want to improve what we're doing. Next um, panelist is Dr. John Shanoff, Director of Los Angeles County Department of Health Service. Good morning. Thank you for inviting me here today. Um, I'm the Interim Director of the Health Department in Los Angeles County. In the, in the health department, health services department, we operate Los Angeles County USC Medical Center, Harbor UCLA Medical Center, Olive View Medical Center, and the Rancho National Rehabilitation Center, as well as many um, comprehensive health centers, ambulatory care centers across the county and health centers. In addition, we partner with community agencies that provide primary care across the, across the county. Um, we provide over 2 million visits a year, and 55% of those are visits by people for whom ling English is not their primary language nor their language of preference or where they have a limited English proficiency. Um, the majority, of course, of the those non-English are Spanish, but in order of, um, in order of the languages, uh, we have, in addition to English, the top five are Spanish, English, Korean, Cantonese, Mandarin, and Tagalog. Um, overall, there are 92 languages, including sign languages, that we know of that are, uh, that are spoken by our patients. Um, I will just very briefly tell you what we have done. I think um, we've made s some progress over the last couple of years, but we have to continue to improve upon that. Um, one of the major efforts that we have done is to uh, implement a video medical interpretation program. Um, we've, we've, we and other public hospitals across the state have determined that we, it's, it's really not possible always to have persons who speak every one of these languages that we may need to have access to at every one of our facilities. So we can take advantage through video conferencing of the people who speak languages and can interpret and are trained for interpretation at various facilities. So we're linked in with the network. Um, this was actually piloted at, uh, at Rancho Los Amigos um, uh, for our system, but now all of our hospitals are linked together with hospitals across the state, other public hospitals across the state, to provide interpretation services. Um, and Korean is one of the one of the key languages that is available through that network. Um, the other thing that we did within the last year, and Supervisor Kanabi mentioned this, was that we have hired positions, persons who are specifically there for translation for interpretation. Um, and one of those um, is is Korean. And I want to introduce two people who are here with me today. Um, we have Mia Iwataki, who's the head of our Office of Diversity and Cultural Competence. Mia, would you stand up here? I think, I think those of you who have um, 
worked with Mia through various Asian Pacific Islander uh, meetings, know that she's been a tireless champion for this effort over the last number of years. And we have with us Teresa Yunha Huang. Did I say that close to right? Okay. And she is, she's stationed at Rancho Los Amigos, but she provides the services that I was describing by video conference across our system. Um, now that's just a start. Um, and we, we also need to pay attention to the, the written materials that we have and that we provide in our facility to make sure that they're accessible to people for various languages. Um, but I think we've made a start on this and, and uh, be happy to take your questions when we get to that part. Thank you, Mr. Shunov. We're glad to hear that um, Department of Health Service is uh, doing a really good job helping community with the uh, medical interpreting technology. And we have already seen improvement through that. Thank you. Next panelist is Michael Leos, Deputy Regional Manager for Office of Civil Rights at Reason 4 of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. We're going to get ready for his PowerPoint presentation. Okay. Um, well, good morning, and uh, thank you uh, for having me here. Uh, my name is Michael Leos. I'm with the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Office for Civil Rights, uh, Region 9. We're a federal agency. And I wanted to just take this opportunity to give, um, provide you some information about what are the requirements, at least under federal law, um, for language access and language assistance. I, I understand that there are a lot of issues regarding interpretation and translation, so I wanted to cover a little bit of that with you. So if you could follow me through... On the first slide, it just gives a statistic on a national level in terms of how many persons in the country are limited English proficient. Those are people who do not speak English well. Um, the majority in the country of persons who we call limited English proficient are persons who speak Spanish. But as you can see, the, the next major languages are Asian languages, including um, the Chinese dialects, Korean and Vietnamese are the top languages where we, in the country. And then there's also other uh, languages uh, that are prominent, such as Russian. Um, as you know, Los Angeles County has a higher percentage or proportion of persons who are limited English proficient. And Korean certainly is one of the, uh, the most prevalent languages that are encountered here in this county. Title VI, which um, one of the gentlemen mentioned earlier, is a federal law that requires um, that persons have meaningful access to services. In other words, under federal law, you cannot be discriminated against because you do not speak English. That means that you have a right to services in your language and to understand what is being said to you um, if you're seeking social services, for example, or going to a hospital. So our agency enforces that uh, regulation. Um, also, I understand that one of the um, agencies that you come in contact with is Social Security Administration, and the Social Security Administration, I believe one of the other panelists is going to speak a little bit more about that. They also have, um, under federal law, they're subject to an executive order that requires them to provide uh, language assistance to persons who cannot speak English. So I just wanted to let you be aware of that. But basically, whether you're in contact with LA County DPSS or a state agency or the Social Security Administration, you should have an opportunity to get services in your language. Um, and whether, now there's a difference between interpretation and translation. The law is different uh, in that respect. Um, even if you, um, if you're, it's a little bit complicated, but basically 
you have a right to get oral interpretation any time you go to any agency. So that means that even if they do not translate the form for you, they have to tell you what's in that form, especially if it's something that's considered a vital document. And a vital document would be an application for benefits or a notice that says your services are going to be terminated or where you have to respond to that notice. So you have to understand what that notice says so that you can respond appropriately to that notice. However, if the language in a particular service area meets a certain threshold, which in Los Angeles County, I know Korean is one of those languages, they do have to provide written translations or notices in that, in your language. So I know that, you know, we've discussed that, and I know that L.A. County DPS is aware of that. We've actually worked with both L.A. County DPS and also the state agency, California Department of Social Services and California Department of Health Services, to assist them with their obligations with respect to Title VI. So there is basically an obligation under federal law to get oral interpretation as well as written translation for Korean and certain other languages. So basically, I just wanted to, I'll be able to answer any questions you have from the federal law perspective. I know that there are also some state laws that I know some of the other panelists are going to discuss. And also I wanted to take this opportunity, and I don't know they're still here, of a couple of staff members from our office who are located here in Los Angeles. I see one of them back there, Brock Evans. Could you say hello? And also I have Young Kyung Lee, and I don't see her. She, she's upstairs apparently. So just wanted to take an opportunity to meet them if you'd like as well. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. So our next panelist is Joel McIntyre. He is Directing Attorney at National Senior Citizen Law Center. Thank you. I'm glad to see that there is such interest in, in dealing with language access. And I want to thank the Korean Resource Center for the invitation to come here. Now, I'm with the National Senior Citizens Law Center, which is a, an advocacy group on behalf of, of older people uh, in America. And uh, actually, our office is right down the street, so I'm certainly aware of the need for Korean interpreters. Um, I'm going to talk to you about uh, 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 services provided by the Social Security Administration. I don't work for the Social Security Administration, but I deal with Social Security issues. So, and they have basically two programs, Social, Secu Social Security uh, and the insurance program, as well as the SSI program. And I'm sure that most of the people in, in the room are familiar with those programs. Now, in dealing with Social Security, the law is different. Uh, it's not the same as it is if for dealing with county or state agencies. As, as uh, Michael Leos was just mentioning, you have enforceable rights uh, with respect to state and, and federal agencies. Um, the, it's different with respect to Social Security. Um, I, Michael Leos mentioned that there's an executive order that was issued back in 2000 by President Clinton. And that basically says, yes, that they have to have a plan, but it also, the final, you know, and it all sounds very nice when you read it, but then you get to the very end and it says that uh, this doesn't create any new, uh, new enforceable rights. And title, since Title VI doesn't apply, basically um, there is no right, no, no legal right to interpretive services or written notices in dealing with the Social Security Administration. So I want to just make that clear. Now, what, hap what, is, what goes on at Social Security? I mean, some of you probably, uh, probably are familiar with what goes on. Um, but let me just tell you what the, how, what, how it is, is, is set up at Social Security. At Social Security, there is a very good, sort of, this is a mix of sort of the good, bad, and ugly. Um, the good part is that Social Security has an interpreter policy which is really uh, probably the best in the nation. It provides that uh, anybody 
in their dealings with the Social Security Administration is, no matter what language they speak, is entitled to an interpreter in their dealings with Social Security. Uh, unlike Title VI, where, you know, there has to be a certain threshold level, so that Korean, for instance, you would have a right to an interpreter. Uh, in the case of uh, uh, dealing with the Social Security Administration, for instance, if you speak, you know, Mongolian or some other language which is not found in such great quantity here, they still have to provide you with an interpreter. So that's, that's the good news. And this is really important, by the way, in dealing with Social Security because what a lot of people don't realize is the SSI program has more uh, limited English speakers among the S in the SSI program than any other benefit program in the nation. Nationwide, older or a greater percentage, I should say, I don't know about the total numbers, the nationwide, over one-third of the people, of, of older people who apply for SSI benefits prefer to speak a language other than English, all right? And Korean is one of the, one of the major languages that they deal with. So uh, they, they do have to provide the interpreter service, but in practice, we know that what happens very frequently um, is that pe people don't get an interpreter when they need one. Um, and it, it varies from office to office, so that I'm sure that people here in this room have had different experiences in dealing with Social Security. Some offices, I think, are pretty good, um, but such as one in Glendale. Uh, others are really poor. So, uh, but you have a right to insist on it, and you really should, particularly if you're dealing with something important, because you can't afford to have a misunderstanding uh, and, and somebody writes down that you said X when you really said Y. Um, now, when it comes to written notices, um, here the Social Security Administration does nothing. They provide some notices in Spanish, but even that is incomplete um, and sometimes not really uh, targeted towards Spanish speakers. They provide no notices in any other language. Um, they, the last I uh, heard from people at Social Security, they had a long-range plan, and, and this, this is and very vague, for in providing notices in one other language, in Chinese, um, perhaps in 10 years. So um, I don't know what that means in terms of Korean. Um, I, I don't see any children here, but if I saw one, maybe I would say that when that, uh, when that child retires. But uh, this is something, though, that... While there is no legal right to get a notice in your own language, um, it, it is not something that we should just forget about. So it is something, for instance, that I think that you should speak to, uh, you know, contact your uh, representatives in Congress, your senators, Senator Feinstein, Senator Boxer, and whoever your um, local uh, representative is in, in Congress, uh, plus probably uh, Representative Becerra, who is uh, on the committee that has jurisdiction. So uh, that would be my, my suggestion. Thank you. Thank you, Joe, for your clear and detailed explanation. Um, lastly, uh, Luisa from uh, Claudia Molina's office is here, so I just want to give her a chance to just say hi. Well, good morning, because it's still morning. So uh, my name is Luisa Oyage, and I'm the senior legislative deputy for uh, county supervisor Gloria Molina. She's a representative for the first district that encompasses downtown L.A., the Pico Union area, all the way to Pomona. And that is her population and constituency of 2 million. And I'm here to listen to you, and I know how, what it is like because I, uh, at this age of my life, I'm still the interpreter for my parents. Um, and I'm going to, uh, with my dad, to Kaiser to interpret his new prescription um, uh, classes. And Kaiser called me and said, please come with your dad who serve as his interpreter. So I know the pressures of, of, of children as well as parents and growing uh, aging parents too 
when it deals with um, issues of interpretation, uh, language interpretation, etc. And also, I know for a fact that the supervisor is very committed to full access, not only on Korean languages, but all well, minority languages here in Los Angeles County. I know back in 2000, the census reveals that there's a 2% uh, Korean um, spoken language in LA County. And I know in the upcoming census, which is 13 months away, that everybody will make sure that everybody gets counted and fill out the necessary forms in indicating to us about the spoke, um, spoken Korean in your homes. So I'm here to listen and report back to our supervisor because she's very interested in on uh, learning more about your challenges and experiences with all of our county departments. And I know they're doing a good job, but I know we could do more and c could become better. So thank you. Thank you. Um, so I, I guess our um, last panelist is Dorina Wang. Thank you. <laughs> I forgot my cue. Oh, dear. Um, good afternoon. Yes, I want to thank KRC for inviting me. Um, I guess my role is a little different here because I'm probably, well, along with Jerry, one of the advocates that try to help people when they have language problems. And so what I really want to focus on today is to find out like what kind of problems there are and try to figure out how to solve them. So I'm looking forward to talking about you know your questions. I think it's very good, I think, to be able to ask you know the people in charge why you're not getting an interpreter or why you're not getting the materials in your language. So I'm not going to really focus as much on what I have presented here because I wanted to make sure that you had it in your materials so that when you go home and you have questions and you're not sure what your rights are, what you should be getting, that you can go back and look at that. And I also want to tell you that I'm going to try to work with the uh, community health promoters, uh, the program at KRC, to try to follow through on those kinds of complaints that you have so that we can make sure that you do get an interpreter or that your notices are translated, okay? So let's just go, like Michael uh, Leos was explaining, and also Jerry, like what your rights are under the federal program, but aside from Title VI, uh, you also have some very um, good rights under the state law so that, uh, you know, certain um, hospitals and certain medical providers are supposed to be uh, providing an interpreter for you when you go to their office. So how many, to let me know, how many people here have had problems when you go to the hospital or you go to the doctor and you can't get an interpreter? How many people? And then, and then, and then, of course, a lot of you also have problems with. Yeah, a lot, many of you, many, almost all of you. Ha, so when you go to the doctor, do they say you have to have you have to bring an interpreter? Is that what they say? Do they make you bring your own interpreter when you go see the doctor? Well, I, I, I'm here to tell you that they should not be doing that, okay? Uh, and so we should, it's good to hear about these problems so that we can find out what to do about them. Um, so under, the, the other, the other um, aspect I want to explain is that not only do you have, you know, rights because of, of language, but also there's what we call, you know, cultural uh, competency requirements or standards. They have to do with, 
you know, you know, different cultures are familiar with different kinds of healthcare systems. And so what we also have are kind of recommendations and guidelines about what's required for cultural and linguistic competent services. And so there are some national standards, and so I have put some of them on here for you to, uh, so you know that they're there. And, and, and some of them have to do with language, but some of them have to do with, you know, cultural aspects, like because uh, uh, of your social group, religion, uh, or, or, or sex. You have to be, uh, the, the provider has to be aware of those cultural factors as well as your language. And then, and then there is a state requirement that uh, Michael was explaining about Title VI. But under state law, there's a very similar requirement that any kind of state-funded agency, let's say the, because Title VI only applies if that program or that provider is getting federal money. Say that that provider doesn't get any federal money. If they only get state money, then they also have an obligation under the state government code to provide, to not discriminate on the basis of language. So there's also a state requirement like Title VI. And then also your, your local and state social service agencies, also under what we call the Daimle Aleatory Bilingual Services Act, are supposed to provide you, make sure that you have access to their services if the service area serves 5% um, of, of a certain language population. Probably in LA, uh, that may cover Korean. And then, and then there's some local ordinances also. Even in Monterey Park, they passed a, uh, a voluntary ordinance where they provide, they try to provide translation and interpreter services at their local agencies. And then, and then the COP Act refers to the hospitals, you know, so when you go to a hospital, uh, they're supposed to be providing you interpreters, um, uh, when you go to see them. Also, some of their materials are supposed to be translated as well. And then under the Medi-Cal program, how many people uh, uh, receive Medi-Cal? A lot of you. So uh, those requirements that Michael was talking to you about under Medi-Cal, the, the, the Title VI applies to that. And, and, and there's very, actually, very strict requirements under the contracts to, like, if you, if you belong to a managed care program, what they're supposed to be doing. And as he was explaining, um, there's, uh, an, in LA County, there are 11 languages that meet a particular threshold, 11 languages that have to be translated, and Korean is one of those languages. And then finally, in, in health, the Healthy Families Program, which is a program mainly for kids, they also have requirements where um, certain in interpreters are supposed to be provided in translation of materials. And then um, I wanted to mention a new requirement that just is in effect since January 1st, uh, that uh, like even if you don't have Medi-Cal, but you have like a private uh, insurer, you belong to a private health plan, they now have to provide interpreters in translation of certain materials in certain languages. So that now in California, just about everybody has to be provided an interpreter if they need one, and then they have to be provided translation of materials uh, in certain languages, and that depends. So I can't get into it at the moment exactly which uh, plans have to translate into what languages, but if you co go to KRC, if you have a question, or or you, you can contact me, we can try to figure out if that plan is supposed to be providing those um, translation of materials. There's also another new um, law that is that passed that has to do with like pharmacies and the you know the, the little medication labels that uh, are in English. I know that if those little labels are in English, it's very hard to understand. But the department, um, the pharmacy board, is now looking at how to make those labels more understandable. 
and actually maybe even try to have them translated. So they're taking comments to that. And I'm going to be leaving some surveys with KRC so that you could, um, they could try to help you fill it out so that you can tell the pharmacy board that you want it in certain, you want the, the, the labels translated, you know, into your language. So those are some of the, the requirements that, um, are in, on the state level. Um, and so when you look, you know, what kind of rights you have, very often it's easiest to try to figure out who to go to to complain, depending on who is um, where you're going. So that if you're going to, like, a, um, a, a medical office, you know that they receive federal funds, and so you know that they have to comply with Title VI. Or if you... Um, uh, go to a state agency like a state program where they don't get federal funds, you know that you can use that government code I was telling you about to say that you have a right. Or if it's a private plan, you, you have that new requirement under SBA 53. So, so it's very important who is, who is in charge of that program to figure out when you want to try to um, file a complaint or, or, or go and try to get your service. And so, um, the other thing is there's some different steps you can take when you're having problems. I think you're very, it's, you're very lucky because KRC is very responsive and you can go to them when you have a problem. There's also other um, uh, uh, agencies that can help you. There's the Health Consumer Center at the Neighborhood Legal Services who can also help you if you're having problems, and there's some representatives that you'll hear from in a moment uh, about that. Uh, and so, you know, you could try to... Uh, I think when, when others were encouraging you to go to wherever you're having problems and try to file some complaint, that is very important to make sure that it's written down and so there's a record and you know, you know, if they start seeing that there's many complaints, then that will be a pattern and they will have to address that problem. Our office has helped different um, um, patients and, and agencies file complaints with Michael's office, the Office for Civil Rights, so that if there's, you know, a, a serious problem, we can try to address it on a larger level. And finally, there's just, I included some different telephone numbers that you can call if you're having problems. There's some numbers if you're, you know, there's, I put the OCR number on there. Also, if you're having problem with your managed care plan, there's a there's a HMO hotline that you can call when you're having complaints getting an interpreter. And and finally, I just wanted to let you know that there are efforts because um, to try to get funding to pay for interpreters and translation of services because one of the issues is that a lot of providers, a lot of doctors' offices or hospitals say, oh, we can't provide these services because we can't pay for it. And so there's some of us that are working on a statewide level to try to get the De State Department of Healthcare Services to get some federal matching funds to pay for these services. And so there was a... Um, a task force that was created, uh, the Medi-Cal Language Access Services Task Force, that we came, we were meeting for the last couple of years, and we have a recommendation for the state, and we're talking to the state to try to get some money so that we can pay for these services so people won't have to pay it for it for themselves and will help the doctors and the hospitals and the other providers pay for these services. So I will be working with KRC to give you more information when we maybe need you to write um, the governor's office or maybe write uh, the legislators in, in Sacramento. Anyway, so I'm going to, that, that about ends my presentation and we're going to I'm looking forward to hearing about your questions, and then maybe we can try to come up with some solutions. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. Um, as I was hearing panelists' comments, I was really impressed by their knowledge and detailed explanation, as well as their commitment from different government and agencies that they're not just sitting there, not doing anything, but they try to work with the community and put their effort in it. So KRC, Community Health Promoters, and everyone here really appreciate their effort. Uh, one thing that I would like to mention that hearing panelists' comments and remarks, 
that I guess the language access is uh, our right, and we uh, it's protected by law, either uh, federal level, state level, or local level, that it's given to us. So I guess that was clear from the presentation. And also, I would like to make a quick um, question to Mr. Shinov that I am really well familiar with the uh, BMI project. And I was just wondering that uh, currently the project is funded through uh, grant money. And there, I, I wasn't sure about uh, secure funding. So I was just wondering whether that project will continue with the um, interpreters that you hired uh, as of now. We have to find a way to make that continue. So, so there the is answer no is yes. Oh, okay. Thank you. That will be really great news because a lot of Korean. <laughs> uh, let me let me just explain because the Department of Health Service provides this PMI uh, uh, program, which any. Korean patient can go to four county, four different county hospitals to get uh, interpreting services, and we really appreciate that. And also, I just wanted to um, thank uh, Mr. Uh, Browning for mentioning that DPSS is trying really hard, which we already knew, and also it's going to be happening soon, and maybe end of this year. So we really appreciate uh, their effort. DPSS has been having meeting with KRC and uh, uh, our seniors for a year, and it's not just we're meeting at this town hall, but we've been built relationship, and we try hard work together to find out the problems. So I just wanted to uh, say thank you. And also um, for uh, Michael, Jerry, and Dorina providing us uh, thorough knowledge and uh, explanation on our legal rights. And um, so due to our time restriction, uh, we pre-collected questions from community members, and I'm going to be reading it to panel. If any of you can answer this question, uh, that would be great. So the question was, why the language service is not happening? Why interpreter service is not quick enough when I go to hospital. And I was just wondering if it's uh, protected by law. I would like one of you to explain why. So it's mainly why it's not happening. So I guess it's kind of like broad question. Anybody wants to answer? Well, I think it's, you know, money is part of it. The state budget cut many county departments, so we don't have as many staff as we did last year. Just to be honest, we have 800 fewer staff. That has some impact. That's not the total impact. I do think it's important for us to realize the value of translation for all of you, and I think this meeting has certainly helped, helped us to do that. We have about well, almost 4,000 staff in DPSS who are bilingual for the various programs, but we only have 38 in the Korean language, so that is a challenge for us. Oh, thank you for your answer. And I would like to just acknowledge the fact that we have members of, uh, members from Cambodian community and Filipino community. So I just wanted to let you know that, uh, not only Korean and other community members are here present. So if you want to, you know, address that, that would be great too. Um, so, again, uh, we have time restrictions oh. and we have a lot of great community-based organization representatives here today. So we would like to hear a couple of comments from them. Um, I would like uh, for Eli from Neighborhood Legal Service Center. Would you like to give us a comment? Good morning, everybody. I'm, a, I'm at Neighborhood Legal Services. 
I'm a staff attorney, and we've, we've been working very hard to try to assist uh, you guys and anybody else who has uh, needs for language access to get that language access. And many times we've had to file some complaints because we haven't uh, received uh, the appropriate response and the people that we're helping out. And one of the things that we've noticed is that when we've filed complaints and there's an investigation, many times the, the results of the investigation are that, you know, it was bad service and it, it wasn't discrimination. And we're having a problem because it almost seems like discrimination is very narrowly defined. It's almost like it has to be intentional for it to be discrimination. And so one of the questions that we have is, what's the difference between discrimination and bad service? And at what point does bad service become discrimination? So those are the challenges that we face. I don't know if there's anybody here who can help us with that. And it's, it's a challenge. Uh, we understand the challenge. And we appreciate that you're working hard on it. And I, I thank you for allowing me to make a comment. Um, anybody would like to respond to uh, Eli's comment? I would. Oh, OK. Um, I'm Nick Ippolito. I'm the Social Services Deputy for Supervisor Kanabi. Um, Neighborhood Legal Services has been an ongoing partner with the county on many different issues involving advocacy for our CalWORKs recipients or GR recipients and folks who are on Medi-Cal as well. Um, you know, I, I defer to uh, Mr. Browning for more information, but um, I think that we, I think that DPSS and, and the county in general makes an um, um, uh, extended effort to work with advocates to look at not only particular issues as it pertains to um, specific clients and specific situations, but also those specific situations if they're indicative of a larger systemic issue. And I, and I know, Bob, you meet fairly regularly, I think, with, with advocates on, on the issue of, of civil rights and language access. I know as far as my boss is concerned, and I think of everybody at this table, um, uh, customer service and um, making sure that people have reasonable access to the services that they're entitled to and the information they're entitled to is is priority number one. And um, I think we just you know we just continue to work on those issues and 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 just and just continue to um, uh, try to identify resolutions for them. So I hope that makes sense. I don't know if anybody else wants to add anything from the county's perspective. Well, one thing that would be helpful before this meeting is over or maybe after that is to have some specific situations a specific name a case number and what didn't go right I have the one uh, set of forms here which would certainly be helpful I know you want those back but if we could have some very specific things that we could go back and see if our automated system is doing something that we're not aware of maybe it's not doing what we think it is. We not we know it's not doing everything we would like it to do, but there may be some some information that you have that you can give us so that we can go back and identify specifically in your situation what went wrong. That's the only way we'll fix this system. And Michelle is here. You want to stand up again, Michelle? Michelle is bilingual, and I think she can certainly get information from some of you about the specific problem, the specific form, the date, and actually what what happened. So if, if, if you just want to say that again so that everyone will uh, understand that, Michelle. Uh, 저희가 그 translated 하는 form들이 그 리더 시스템 안에 들어가서 그것을 그 Korean speaking worker가 uh, Korean speaking 하는 language로 assign이 되면은요 그것이 이제 Korean form으로 클릭이 돼서 리더 시스템에서 그게 나오게 돼 있어요. 그래서 그런데 지금 problem은 아직 그 많은 language들이 그 안에 다 들어가 있지 않기 때문에 그런 스텝들이 필요해서. 그런 것 같아요. 근데 저희들이 지금 말씀하신 미스터 브라우닝께서 말씀하신 것은 그런 랭귀지들이 우리 리더 시스템 안에서 클릭을 했을 때그 폼들이 자동적으로 다 나오게 되어 있는데요. 그래서 그런 시스템의 문제가 조금씩 걸리는 것 뿐인 거예요. 그래서 아직 저희들이 어, 준비한 것을 다 어, 리더 안에 다 넣지를 못했고요. 그런 것들이 
조금 기다려야 되는 문제들이 있는 것 같아요. 
that specific worker that we contacted claims in her voicemail that those are only hours that she receives phone calls. That, that's where we need specifics. We need to know who was called, what office, if, it, if you're talking about a DPSS office, and who you were trying to get in touch with. You know, only if we know specifics can we really take the most appropriate action. Um, yes, that is correct. But at the same time, I see frustration from community members' part that they have to complain over and over again. That's why we're having this town hall to have great panelists to listen to communities and come together to uh, resolve this problem. So we understand that we have to bring specific cases to people who can uh, change this, but at the same time, we would really appreciate if you move forward a little bit quicker to uh, help community members to get the service that they deserve. But again, this cannot happen without collaboration among community-based organizations, community members, and um, all these governmental agencies who are trying really hard. So um, with that note, uh, I would like to hear from uh, Anita from Parts for Health, another comment from community-based organization working on language access issue. Good morning. My name is Anita Honghale. I'm a program director of Pals for Health. We are a full spectrum language service provider for LEP patients. And oftentimes, we are the last resort for patients who are not able to communicate in English language and who have been denied of their rights to free interpretation services. And I understand a lot of time when we come out to talk to um, elected officials or to um, hospital administrators, we often hear, you know, oh, I didn't know that this is a problem. I didn't know the extent of the problem. So in that in that effort, we have collected stories from actual patients who have been denied of um, their right to language assistance. And I would like to highlight one story in particular, and I have left this um, on, on your um, table for you. The story is from Ms. Edna Gutierrez. She was diagnosed with breast cancer. When she went in for the biopsy, she had asked for uh, a Spanish interpreter and a Spanish interpreter was not provided for her. When the doctors were prepping to do the biopsy, they were prepping the wrong breast. Using hand gesture, she was trying to communicate to the doctors that they were operating on the wrong breast, but they ignored her. So the biopsy results came back as negative, and she was sent home. After that, she received notices, follow-up notices in English, which she could not understand. And even if she could understand, she wasn't going to go back to the same hospital knowing that she got inadequate care in the first place. Four years later, when she couldn't stand the pain anymore, she had to go back to the hospital. At that time, she, was, she had to use her 15-year-old daughter as an interpreter. When the daughter learned that her breast cancer had advanced to stage four and she was to have her breast removed, the daughter was not able to communicate that to her because of the emotional impact. The daughter ended up having to miss school and she would cry all the time and she kept on trying to convince her mother that everything was okay. On the day that Ms. Gutierrez had to come in for consultation for the surgery, she was once again denied her right to um, language assistance. She had to call her brother who was on the road working as a truck driver to interpret for her. When her brother learned that the chance of survival of the surgery was 30%, her brother was traumatized by the effects. He ended up having to lose work to recover himself from, from having to deliver the bad news to her, um, her sister. In Ms. Guterres' own word, she said, it is very sad when you're unable to communicate due to language constraints. Many mistakes occur, maybe even the loss of lives. And by chance, she was able to find a, a staff member of Pals for Health, and she was able to access our services. And even yesterday, I was at UCLA, speaker of language access, and a staff member from Chinese Progressive Action came up to me and said, we have so much problem with LAC USC. We try to address the issue in terms of providing interpretation services for Chinese immigrants, especially low-wage earners, and we've gotten nowhere. What can we do about that? So we are working together, and, and I've been very um, comforted by Mia's presence and, and willingness to work with us to address that issue as well. And I'm also very um, – I would like to commend 
um, Dr. Shunoff's office on the improvement made at Rancho. We understand the effectiveness of BMI. The technology works, but the cost to the county at this point is quite prohibitive. And we are hoping to be able to work with the county in coming up with using the same technology but at a more cost-effective um, way to address the language needs. And finally, we were greatly touched by um, Supervisor Don Cannabis' office in contacting us last summer in trying to work out a program where we could actually develop using the resources of the community to train community members to become healthcare interpreters so that, A, um, in this recession, in this climate of unemployment, they would have a, a gainful way of earning a living while providing a much needed services to the county, acting as trained healthcare interpreters, also um, to supplement the, the language uh, assistance that's currently being uh, offered by LA County Hospital. And I would like to mention also the Korean interpreter at Rancho Teresa used to be um, a PALS language consultant as well. So we understand, we could proudly say the effectiveness of our um, training program. Um, the question that I have, since I have everyone here, is how committed are you to addressing this issue? And if you are committed, are you willing to send representatives who have power to actually make the changes that need to meet with us, the consumers, the community-based organizations on a quarterly basis? Because this is a great problem that everyone here has experienced. In, in great extent. And it, it's disheartening for us to have the power that be to say, we don't know this is a problem. We want you to know that this is a problem, and we want you to know that we are here not to blame, but to work with you to address the issue. So that's my question. Thank you very much. Um. Um, anybody from panelists would like to answer her suggestion? Well, just let me say we're willing to meet with and work with any anyone. And certainly part of the reason for being here today is to hear and listen well, uh, how things are and how, how, you know, how far we have to go yet. And I think DPSS is certainly willing to come to the table to try to resolve the issues, just, uh, just like uh, Dr. Chernoff said. Definitely, this is the first step of that. And not only to include our social services programs, but also the rest of array of county programs, um, as you know. So one is the social services, but we do provide a whole array of municipal services to the county. And also there are language access issues, not only in this population, but across the board. How do you say absolutely in Korean? Taeyeon. Um, thank you so much for everyone committing to the meeting that we might be calling you soon. So uh, get everyone ready to send someone from your office. And we'll get ready as community-based organization and community members. Um, so now, thank you all for your great comments and questions. And we hope to continue this great work among us and collaborate to make these things uh, change and get better in our community. Now, Yang Hee Park from K K Korean Research Center We'll close today's event with, um, before closing, she's going to announce some uh, instruction. <laughs> 안녕하세요. 저는 어, 민족학교에서 의료 교육 봉사를 하고 있는 박양희입니다. 어, 앞서 여, 여러 연장자분들이 언어의 고통을 말씀하셨듯이 저는 봉사를 통해 연장자분들의 어려움을 직접 지켜보고 있습니다. 어, 저희 민족학교에서는 가주 보건 리더 모임과 함께 3년 여의 언어 권리 캠페인을 활동하였으며 현재 모든 메디칼 서류가 번역이 다 되어 있다는 소식을 들었습니다. 예, 감사합니다. 어, 그러나 아직도 컴퓨터 시스템이 제대로 실행이 안 되는 문제와 언어 지정 양식
공식서인 PA481을 작성하여도 언어 서비스를 못 받는 분들이 계십니다. 어, 이, 어, 이틀 전인 한 분이 민족학교로 방문을 하셨었습니다. 공공사회복지부 사무실에 찾아가 통역 서비스를 요청하였으나 거절되어 메디카를 결국 신청을 못하시고 돌아오셨습니다. 언어 서비스가 안 되어 받는 고통은 한인 연장자뿐만 아니라 전체 LA 카운티 이민자 연장자들에게 해당되, 해당다는 문제라고 봅니다. 오늘 언어 권리 로스앤젤레스 타운홀 자리에서 문제점을 지적해 주셨고 또그 해결점에 대해 논의가 될수 있는 자리가 되어 좋았습니다. 이러한 의견들이 이 자리에서 끝나는 것이 아니라 지속적으로 함께 노력하여 결실을 맺어서 영어가 불편하신 모든 분들에게 더 이상 불이익이 없도록 되었으면 좋겠습니다. 어, 그런 의미에서 오늘 이 자리는 일회성 행사가 아니라 어, 첫걸음이라고 생각됩니다. 오늘 가까이에서 커뮤니티와 의견을 교환하기 위해 참석해 주신 정부기관 관계자분들께 다시 한번 감사드립니다. 어, 순서 내내 커뮤니티 의견을 경청하고 해결 의지를 보여주셔서 기쁘게 생각합니다. 오늘 보여주신 관심과 의지로 앞으로도 한인 커뮤니티뿐 아니라 로스앤젤레스 내 소수민족 커뮤니티와 협력하여 질 높은 서비스를 위한 시스템을 구축할 때까지 함께 노력해 주시길 다시 한번 부탁드립니다. 이런 자리를 마련할 수 있도록 참여해 주신 여러분들께도 다시 한번 감사드리며 언어 권리 로스앤젤레스 타운홀을 마치겠습니다. 어... 어, 그리고 저희가 나가실 때 통역기를 반납을 해 주시고요. 그리고 신분증을 꼭 찾아가 주시고요. 저희가 간편하게 점심을 대신해서 샌드위치를 밖에 준비를 했습니다. 지금 한꺼번에 다 일어나지 마시고요. 지금 나가시려면 복잡하시니까요. 저희가 순서대로 줄을 서서 저희 안내 어, 안내원에 저희 직원들 자원봉사자분들이 안내를 할 것입니다. 예, 그러면 조심해서 돌아가십시오. 감사합니다. 네. So we're gonna have speakers and organization representatives exit first. <웃음>